ArcGIS Pro has been able to use SVGs since ArcGIS Pro was a thing. But there's a couple things I like to do to those raw assets before I bring them into ArcGIS Pro to make the symbol creation process a little bit easier. How's it going, folks? Welcome back to the Car Redux channel. My name is Tommy. Let's talk about how I make some custom symbols. Now, first things first, whenever I'm starting on a custom symbol project, I always need a little bit of, a little bit of inspiration, something to get the creative juices flowing. So I like to head over to the noun project, mostly just to get an idea of what's what. They've got a ton of high quality icons, free for use as long as you credit the author. And then they're also there for, uh, for royalty free use if you purchase them. So really cool options there. The other place I like to go is the Mackie icons, Mackie, Mackie, whatever. But I'm just gonna download this whole set, just grab all of those and we'll look through those in a little bit. But then also the Google Materials site. You can actually get really high quality icons in a bunch of different styles, filled, outlined. I'm gonna stick with rounded for right now and let's look for, I'm looking for three symbols. I'm looking for a school, I'm looking for a theater icon and a museum icon. I'm doing some points in New York City. I don't wanna spoil everything for the next video, but let's let's look for some of those, those kinds of icons. Let's look for theater first. Okay, that's pretty cool. That's the ubiquitous symbol for theater. So I'll download that. And next up, let's look for schools. Do the same thing. I like that one. So we'll grab that. That's good. And then last but not least, let's look for a museum. Grab that one as well. So now that I've got all my icons downloaded, my raw SVGs, let's head over to my vector graphic editor of choice, Affinity Designer. I bet you thought I was going to say Adobe Illustrator, but let's let's change things up a little bit here. So this is Affinity Designer. Now let me show you how I've got things set up here. So here's my project. I've got a bunch of 400 pixel by 400 pixel artboards set up for each icon. And I've got a few symbol shapes are ready to go. And these will serve as the background portion of the symbols that we build. So just the generic circle and a points of interest pin. And you notice these shapes are just fills. There's no outlines or strokes on any of these. And that's gonna be really important for later when we start working on these SVGs in pro. So no outlines on your icons and shapes, remember that. You'll also notice that both of these symbols don't take up the whole 400 pixel artboard. This just leaves a nice 25 pixel border around the outside. And that's with these blue guides here. That's just the, the 25 pixel border. We wanna make sure that our shape and our symbols stay within those guides. Now I've selected a few of the symbols that I just downloaded. Here's the theater symbol from Mackie and the museum from Mackie as well. And the school icon from Google material icons. Now each of these icons are set up a little differently. Notice the Mac icons are 15 pixels by 15 pixels, but the Google materials icon is 48 pixels by 48 pixels. The theater icon that's kind of centered, museum icon, nope. And the school icon, again, something different. And again, that's, that's to be expected. Each provider is gonna give you something a little bit different. And this is why I like to normalize things a little bit prior to bringing things into pro. I like to get things a bit more consistent. That way, when we're configuring symbol sizes in Pro, that same size is gonna work across all the different symbols that we create. So let's start with theater. Let's grab this icon. Let's bring you right over here. Let's clean up that name. We're gonna to need to scale that up a smidge. Increase these to 350 by 350, and then let's just make sure that's nice and centered. Fit nice and neat right inside of our guides. Let's do the same thing with museum. Just copy that symbol. Bring it over here to this layer, scale it up, and center it. Last, schools. So I want to export all these symbols. But wait, you'll, you might be saying, well, you haven't put any of these icons together. You haven't paired up these primitives with their underlying symbol shape. And there's a really good reason for that, which I'll cover in the next video. But in a nutshell, I want to keep my symbol components separate and I'll mash them up in Pro later. A lot of customers I've been working with recently like having these primitives and the various symbol components separate so they can mix and match them to suit their various needs for different maps and apps. But more on that in the next video. So let's head over to the export persona. I've already got slices set up for each of the layers and those slices are already set to 400 pixels by 400 pixels. Now, slices are just Affinity's way of defining portions of an artboard that you want to export. So let's make sure that we've also got all of these slices configured to use the same SVG export settings. Nice. So then I can just click this export slices. 
pick my directory. Now I've got all my icons ready to go. Just open those. These are the originals. These are the new ones. Clean, consistent, all sized the same, all nice and centered, ready to go, ready to import into ArcGIS Pro. And that's it for this one, folks. Stick around, there'll be another video coming out real soon on how to actually import these into ArcGIS Pro and then also use them in a really cool way with ArcGIS Online and the Map Viewer. So, thanks for watching. See you soon.